In this short presentation, I'll take you through the Actum model and how it can help you with your software development projects. The official definition of the Actum model is an actor is an isolated, independent unit of compute and state with single threaded execution. There are three main types of actors that you'll probably come across. There's the volatile actor, which is purely stored in memory. So if anything happens to that actor or the memory that is occupied by the actor, the actor is effectively lost. In order to combat that, we have the concept of a reliable actor, which is where the actor's state is actually persisted in a durable state store. So if the actor is deactivated for any reason, when it's reactivated, the state is re restored. And lastly, the virtual actor. Uh, this is similar to a reliable actor where it has a durable state store, but it has a much more memory efficient profile. It's much more efficient with its memory usage because when the virtual actor is not used for any length of time, it's actually deactivated and garbage collected and doesn't occupy any, any more memory. And that's the main difference between a reliable and a virtual actor. A reliable actor will, will stay in memory until it's manually deactivated or manually garbage collected. The use cases for actors, uh, things, anything that's highly concurrent, so things like online games, every single player in an online game will most likely be represented by an actor running on the server. Any highly concurrent applications such as e-commerce or financial applications where data consistency is vital. Distributed applications where there are many moving parts and data must be shared between the various components in a distributed application. And things like digital twins, which are effectively a digital representation of a physical entity, and they're quite common in the IoT world. So an example would be if you have 100 different temperature sensors it would be very inefficient to query those temperature sensors directly. So with the concept of a digital twin, those temperature sensors update their digital twin on a recurring basis and the application can query the digital twins much faster than actually querying the physical temperature sensors themselves. Actors have quite a lot of features uh, and because they're inherent in memory nature, they are actually very fast to retrieve and they don't require a round trip to the database. The exception to this is for reliable actors. They will have to load their state from a database the first time that they are activated. And with virtual actors, whenever they're deactivated and then reactivated, their state will be restored from a back in store. But as long as the actor is in memory, then it doesn't require a database round trip to get its state. So they're very, very fast to retrieve. The actors themselves encapsulate their own state and log logic via properties and methods. So they're object oriented inherently. The, an actor can have a concept of a timer, which is a regular interval whereby a separate process can be executed in the background. In addition, with virtual actors, they have the concept of reliable timers, which are called reminders. And this ensures that the reminder is executed, even if the actor has been deactivated from memory. Actors can interact with each other asynchronously as well, which is a very important feature, allowing actors to communicate with each other. Actors use a concept called turn-based concurrency. Because actors are single threaded, they can only handle one request at a time. And they do that using the turn based concurrency model. Operations against actors will always be performed on the most recent version of the actor's state, ensuring that the actor is consistent. Actors scale very well because many requests can be executed or many processes can be executed against an actor, but they're all queued up and those requests are always processed in the order that they were received. Now, there are many benefits of using the actor model, but there are several drawbacks. You must know the ID of the actor in order to retrieve it. 
you can't query across actors efficiently. So if you want the ability to be able to query actors, say for example, you have uh, several shops and you have an, an e-commerce platform and each of your shops is represented as a digital twin actor and you want to be able to search for all shops in a geographic location, you can't retrieve actors based on their properties other than the ID. So what you have to do is store the geographic information around your actors in a separate database, perform the query against that database, and once you have the IDs of the actors, then you can query or retrieve each actor separately. Actors, because of their in-memory nature, clearly will use more memory because they are often not always held in memory for any given amount of time. You should only store the current state of the actor, so if you need to record the historical data around an actor or any desired future state, you need to store that in a separate database. Long-running operations on an actor will introduce performance bottlenecks, so you have to be very careful around that. And also be very careful not to introduce circular references between actors, where actor 1 invokes actor 2, but then actor 2 invokes a method back on actor 1, and that can cause circular references which will basically bring your application to a standstill. I hope you found this gentle introduction to actors useful, and hopefully now you'll be able to see if they will be of use to you in your own projects.